Heroically he stands upon the pillar of despair to face the emptiness within. Hey, it was decent. I'm finally back with the NU match, and the excerpt that I did at the beginning of the video is something new that I'm thinking about adding to all of my subsequent videos from now on. I got the idea actually from Soul Calibur 2. You know how, like, at the beginning of the stage, they would say something that would kind of describe the character that you're about to battle? So I'll say something random. It doesn't really even make sense most of the time, but it'd be kind of cool, you know, just as that. But anyway, my opposition leads out with Rotom. I'll switch right out into Seismitoe, which was risky because I know a lot of those. Rotom Forbes carry hitting power grass and obviously Seismitoad is quad weak against it so I do want to set up the self rocks he switches into Sog predicting me to set up the rocks so he still has his sturdy intact and I'm thinking okay he might go for the ice punch predicting my um Galurk to go to come in so I decided to stay in anyway I know I could take a close combat that actually looks like choice bandit damage I actually go for the knockout knock off just in case he happened to be choice scarf because later on I could probably like use the fact that you know he isn't Choice Scarf or Choice Bandit anymore to my advantage. Like, let's say if I have, like, Zangus in play, but then his Sog happens to still be holding the Choice Scarf, I will be in trouble. You know, so I decide to go for that over going for Skull initially. So I go for Skull now as he switches up moves now since I knocked over his Choice Bandit. He predicted me to either go out into Golurk or something else, I think he said. And, um, I think, no, I think he said Charizard? I think he said that. So Ice Punch will hit Charizard neutrally and Golurk for super effective damage. I'm supposed to hit in Golurk for not very effective damage since it's part ground and Charizard for super effective damage. So I'm just going to go for the Volt Switch since he has a minus one special defensive drop. It should be enough to take it out because I'm life orb. I think I'm modest at this point. No, as a matter of fact, no, I'm timid. I know that. I'm timid and this is a weird Zip Striker set. I'm timid with me first. No, I'm naive of me first, and like, I have, I've seen a lot of things like, let's say this thing, Gabite for instance, that has like, Outrage, and if I use me first, I'm sure to use Outrage first. So him switching in Gabite gave me the notion that he was Choice Scarf, because I just killed his Choice Bandit Pokemon, so I switched up, I didn't want my Zangus to take unnecessary damage, and I know that Scullipede would take Gabite's offensive attacks a little bit better than Zangus would any day. So I switched into my Doom Train, if you guys do know, all my characters are named after Guardian Forces and or Material in Final Fantasy, in any Final Fantasy game. So this is Doom Train for Final Fantasy 8. I go into my Doom Train to set up the spikes initially, me thinking that his offensive attacks would be Earthquake and Outrage. I'll have those two attacks more so to deal with. And I'm just going to set up the uh, one of their spikes as he sets up Stuff Rocks, me completely actually forgetting that Gabite has access to that. Otherwise, I would have been more proactive into finishing off Gabite and maybe taking advantage of the fact that, yes, Gabite is in play, finish it off a 2 for sides, you know, instead of having it set up rocks on you, because now I have Charizard and Scolipede, I can't freely switch in any of these clowns back into play because I don't have a spinner on the squad. So now I decide to go and use Spikes after the secondary flinch that I score with my secondary steamroller, me thinking that he was going to actually want to switch out into his Rotom, but he shows me Stone Edge. Is that new? Because I seldom remember having to deal with Gabites bearing Stone Edge. So, wow. That completely took me by surprise. If anything, I was expecting Outrage and or another Earthquake. So I bring in my boy Zangus, able to finish off the Gabite easily. I'm like with the Toxic Boost and everything like that. Staff, Facade, all that outward damage, man. He's not messing with that. So anyway, he breathes in the Haunter. I know that Haunter is faster than Zangus. So I'm thinking his aim is probably to go for the Sludge Bomb and or the Hidden Power of Fighting. So I switch into Galurk because Galurk quad resists poison type attacks as well as his immunity to fighting type attacks. So I'm thinking, all right, I'm safe. He can't really do too much to me. If he sets up the substitute, he's got a nasty little surprise because I have the Kasab Berry, which dwindles down super effective ghost type attacks, but he ends up tricking me, so I'm like, no, this dude not only has a choice banner dude, but he has a choice Bex dude, and I'm under suspicion that his Rotom is choice Scarf at that, so thankfully, in this case scenario, my Galurk has special defensive as well as defensive investments, my Galurk is slow as hell, so if it was paired up against another Galurk, that opposing Galurk would go first, so thankfully, because of that, I was able to survive the Shadow Ball and finish off the haunted despite it now holding what I was holding before which was the Kassab Berry so now his Rotom is Choice Scarf so that means this clown had three po I don't mean to call you a clown but you know it's just a little thing that I have but like this guy had three 
<laughs> choice Pokemon. Oh my gosh. And then not only that, but it's Islash Court of Flinch. I can't even complain about that because my Steamroller did score Flinch on his Gabite when his Gabite was clearly an advantage where he would have been able to take on a facade from the Zangoose as well as a Steamroller coming from my Scullopee. So I guess this is payback in that case scenario. I'm going to Vault Switch out into my Zangoose. Thankfully, I'm not the Swords Dancing type. I do bear a quick attack. So now in comes this Gardevoir. And I'm thinking like, okay, maybe this is like a defensive type. Maybe he's going to goad me into going going into using Night Slash. I'm not going to fall for that. I'm going to go for the facade just in case he happens to go out into Lilone and then, because I'll take the poison damage, go for Extreme Speed to finish me off. So I know his last Pokemon is the Lilone. So I'm like, okay, I'm three up to his one. I'm left over. I'm going to go for the close combat after his Lilone comes into play anyway because Extreme Speed, so let's just say hypothetically speaking that he will go for it right now, which actually he turns out that he does go for it. Let me just make the video catch up to it. He does go for it. And he obviously is able to take me out. I would have went for the close combat. That's exactly what I did. Just in case he didn't go for it. For whatever reason, he chose not to go for it. But that's okay. Because my boy Charizard is about to exact his revenge on Lilone. For taking out his partner Zangus with a Focus Blast. Focus Blast connects. Not really. Because I thought in this case that Flamethrower wasn't going to finish it off. But I completely forgot about the Blaze activation at this point. And it wasn't until I clicked Focus Blast that I was like, crap. Damn it. So now I lose because of that. Peace, what you doing?